Insects are responsible for over half a million deaths per year and millions more in dangerous infections. The mosquito repellent industry in the U.S. alone is estimated to be $1.2 billion by 2025. So in this video, we're going to talk about how these critters find you and how to stay safe and comfortable this summer. So in my research, I've come across a lot of crazy information, some of it I've never heard before. Now I really wanted to get some of that validated. So I arranged an interview with a mosquito doctor. Roll tape. What does a vector ecologist do? Are you, are you a doctor of mosquitoes, essentially? Essentially, ticks and mosquitoes. I got my doctorate studying ticks many years ago and now i work with mosquitoes and have for well over 20 years okay so we've had a few cases of malaria in the united states recently um i've seen it in the news or whatever like what's all that about yeah it's actually interesting we have imported malaria every year in the u.s you know a few hundred to a few thousand cases every year but this is the first time in nearly 20 years it's locally acquired Oh. which means it's in the mosquitoes in those areas and it's biting people and they're getting malaria which is actually concerning because malaria as we all know is is the number one you know cause of vector-borne disease in the world there are malaria vectors which are anopheline mosquitoes all over the u.s so it could be a, an extremely serious situation if it gets out of those very local areas it's currently at. Mosquitoes can carry chikungunya, Zika virus, dengue fever, malaria, all these really, really nasty things. And there's actually nonprofits that are supplying bug nets as fast as they can for people to keep them from getting malaria and dying. Mosquitoes can use chemical cues to find you, like the carbon dioxide that you exhale, ammonia, lactic acid, all of these different compounds they're actually able to sense from like 100 yards away. One of the first things a long range attracts is carbon dioxide. So as you exhale, every time you exhale, you're attracting mosquitoes to you because you're exhaling carbon dioxide. Oh. And that's something that will drift, you know, for many, many hundreds of feet and they'll find you. They'll realize there's an animal and they come looking for you. So the first way they find you is actually by smell. And the best way I've found to defeat that is with Thermacell and they are the sponsor of this video. This device creates a 15 foot radius around where you are. I've used this thing in super, super deep woods for over 10 years I've been using these. So how they work is they have a butane canister inside of them. And when you turn this on and you hit the igniter three times, it starts and that creates the warmth required to diffuse the repellent in the area. And these pads are refillable so you just slip them in there and you're good to go. Because they're crazy lightweight, you can take them on camping trips, throw them in a backpack. These repel mosquitoes without using DEET or lotions on your skin whatsoever. Thermocells, they actually have a good active ingredient in them. You know, they're either a, a lethrin, prelethrin, or I think it's metafluthrin. Those are synthetic pyrethroids that we know control mosquitoes and will repel mosquitoes. So in that regard, I like it because the, the theory is sound. You're releasing a very small amount, but they are EPA approved. These are EPA approved products. The thermocells are EPA approved. So they, that means they've been tested, they've been studied, they've done human testing, so they are safe to use. So these are safe for pets and humans alike. If you don't like putting lotion or sprays on your skin, you should definitely try one of these things out. So my two favorite products right now for thermocell are the MR300. This is like the portable backpacking, hunting, camping, fishing solution. And the patio version. This is awesome for just sticking on the patio at home and then it protects the whole area that you're in. These things are dead simple to use. You just take the pad and you put it inside of the thermocell like that and then they come with a little butane cartridge so you just screw it in the bottom like this and then you put the cap back on it and the switch you flip on in the front to the on position and you hit this button three times that's the igniter you can verify that it's on by looking through the sight glass in the top and there's a little ember that's glowing and to turn it off all you got to do is just flick the switch that's it another way mosquitoes find you is with body heat warm-blooded animals like humans dogs Deer, we all emit a heat signature that they can pick up on. Another very good attractant is heat. So again, when you start thinking about personal attractiveness, everybody has slightly different body heat signatures. Maybe you're out hiking and you're getting, you know, you're worked up. Now you're going to be sweating more, you're going to be warmer so you'll attract more. When mosquitoes get close enough, they can actually sense your body heat and then target in on you even better. So I bought this thermal imaging camera with me just to demonstrate kind of what a mosquito might see when they're getting close to you. So although mosquitoes are primarily gonna target you through chemical and heat 
cues. They can also see you when they get close enough. They can actually tell movement and contrast. So the colors you're wearing will actually make a difference. Movement will cue them in as well as dark clothing. Animals generally are dark and a lot of mosquitoes will fly kind of low and they they're going to see you on the your silhouette on the horizon oh. and so if you've got dark colored clothing on you know you're easier for them to just differentiate with their eyesight because they yeah. see a, a large dark moving animal wearing light colored clothing could actually make you less attractive to mosquitoes this is kind of like beekeeping i was a beekeeper when i was younger i know nerd alert and of course beekeepers wear white suits for a reason because bees get really ticked when they see dark things so if mosquitoes really love you then maybe just try wearing some lighter clothing too and something that surprised me in my research was that mosquitoes are actually drawn to movement they can see movement i used to think that if i would just stay moving the mosquitoes would not be able to find me as easily. But as it turns out, they can actually see you moving and they target in on that. So if you stay still, they're much less likely to target you. But if you're staying still, then all that carbon dioxide is just building up around you. So their primary targeting mechanism is still going to be effective. So what can we do to stay more comfortable outdoors? Well, I would say get a thermocell for sure. Try them out. If you're into camping or hiking or just sitting around on a patio somewhere, then these things are a no-brainer. Second of all, you can treat your clothing with permethrin. I am a huge advocate of this. Get some permethrin spray spray your clothes with it, let them dry, you're good to go. It's really effective against ticks and spiders. Third, you can put on Picard in lotion or DEET spray, and that's really gonna help as well. Some of the 100% DEET repellents, in my opinion, are too strong. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of studies to show that anything above 30% DEET, you really don't get any better repellency from. Mm. So, that, so when you get up to the 50, 70, or 100% repellent, that's when you start to see allergic reactions, skin reactions that people talk about, and they get very concerned. Th then you've got similar things that may have like the citronella or a lot of the essential oils in them. Those, I think, are much less repellent. Mm. I won't say okay. they don't work, but they... Uh, they're not nearly as effective. Fourth, get rid of the standing water in your yard. If you have a bunch of buckets full of nasty water, dump them out because those are gonna be breeding grounds for mosquitoes. You, know, you can do things to avoid making mosquitoes on your own property, certainly. You know, things like a malaria infected mosquito probably isn't breeding in your backyard. It's coming from a swamp, a slough, some backwater, you know, down, down the road. Think about repellents, think about avoiding areas that are very, high in mosquito numbers. If you have a lot of tall grass and swampy area on your property, mow it down if you can. That'll go a long way to eliminating the mosquito problem on your property. Okay, is there a resource where people can go to to look at like mosquitoes in their area and and the, the threat level, so to speak? Yeah, most places have a, a organized mosquito control program and you can Google to find out what's in your area, just usually your county or city name. And if there's an organized abatement district, they'll tell you exactly how many mosquitoes are out there, if there's virus present, mm -hmm. and, and give you some kind of local information of what your concerns might be. Aside from malaria, like what other mosquito-borne illnesses should we be concerned about? Easily the most prevalent is West Nile virus. Yeah. And you see that throughout the U.S. every single year. I would be concerned with West Nile virus always. Other than that, uh, Eastern Aquatic Encephalitis is serious disease to get, especially for children, infants. No matter how good your mosquito control program is, there are going to be mosquitoes. You know, we don't do mosquito eradication. You can't yeah. get rid of them all. So there's always mosquitoes. Do what you can to avoid the mosquitoes. Well, I hope you found that useful or at least entertaining. We'll see you later.